Hello everyone. Nice seeing you again. It took me a while to get to this point, but hey, I'm here. That's all that matters. I hope everybody's having a good time wherever you are in the world. And this is not a video where I have anything specific to talk about. I think specific stuff will probably come later. Cause I haven't really been like, I haven't really been researching anything. Nothing has really piqued my interest to the point where I have anything to talk about, you know? I'm feeling a bit under the weather here lately, and hopefully what's ailing me winds up going away soon, but you know, until then I'm just kicking it, just taking things day by day as usual. I'm pretty sure you all are just out there taking day, taking everything day by day. And hopefully your day by day gets better and better each time. Because life is rough, which is why you got to make the best out of it whenever you get the chance to, you know? I don't know, that's just, it's a lot on my mind, but it's like so much on my mind, I can't like stick to one thing. But one of the things that's on my mind is that uh, a few moments ago, I was just eating a bunch of vegetables looking at junk food on the screen. I don't know if it would help somebody add more vegetables to their diet, but if you wanted to try, I would say pick whatever vegetables you want to eat and then put a video of junk food on. I wouldn't suggest everybody do this because... Um, it might actually trigger you to go get junk food because some people you know they see the junk food they want the junk food that they see and anything else is pretty much a ripoff and i understand that mindset because i have it every once in a while plus you know i have been eating a lot of junk food still I gotta work on my diet, which is why I'm actually trying to fit more vegetables into my diet. I have still been fasting during the daytime. Still ain't comfortable to eat by myself. It is something I'm gonna have to get over. But for now, this is just where I am. Still fasting, still eating food every evening for the most part, and just, you know, kicking it. I would not suggest anybody do what I'm doing unless, you know, you know what you're doing. And first of all, if you're going to fast, I would say, first of all, be comfortable with the food that's around you. Because then it would be a gesture of willpower opposed to being scared of food, you know. I got food allergies, so... I don't know when anything is going to mess with my system, so eating food by myself can cause a panic attack at the least, or it could actually be a real allergic reaction at the most. I mean, no, I would never, like, buy my allergen on purpose. I mean, I don't know anybody that would, but you know, sometimes you get comfortable with things and get a little bit carried away, you don't read everything through. Cause everybody gets tired and lazy and when you're tired you ignore a lot of shit being tired is a lot like being drunk you know you don't notice everything you're not alert you're just there and the only thing that's keeping you upright is the grace of god or the universe or whatever you believe in you know and i've been very tired here lately Deal with being tad, a tad bit sick, still having to, you know, keep up with the girls. Last week was, like, kind of terrible because it was just, I've had the same lesson on the board for about four days now. And normally I would have brought them upstairs for their lessons and just, you know, got through it. But it's just, it's been rough. It's been real rough. I want to start back um with my dancing videos eventually i want to start doing workout videos again i want to start doing more cosplay and more gaming videos i did a live stream last week what i realized is that when i live stream i can't like 
you can't hear me talking on the live stream. So I guess whenever I do live stream, just enjoy the gameplay. And I'll just record some videos of me talking while I'm playing the game and then post those whenever. The only thing that I've been doing is going with the flow. It kills me every time I go with the flow because it makes me feel like I'm not doing anything. Because there's just a bunch of things I want to do. Like even with my comics, there's like, I want to add this to a certain story. I want to add that to a certain story. I want to make a whole new story all together. I just want to draw like a fucking machine, you know, but it's not realistic. It's not realistic for me to draw like a machine. I have to go with where my energy is. It kills me every time, but you know, it's better to get something done than to get nothing done. So that's been my goal ever since I got a little bit sick, just to get something done even if it's not the mass majority of everything that you need to get done. Because if I keep stressing myself out about this, I'm not going to enjoy my life. I'm not going to get anything done. I'm just going to feel like a failure. And it's just going to make me backtrack so much. And then more and more gets ignored and neglected more so than just, you know, a little bit at a time. My mom kept telling me do things a little bit at a time. Your grandpa says do everything a little bit at a time. I kind of rejected the idea because it was like, why would I want to do a little bit when I can do a lot? But it takes a lot of energy to do a lot. And that's what I'm learning now. I have to just take it as it goes. Because you can't control what happens in life. I mean, there's certain things in life that you can control, but you can't control everything. I didn't want to, I didn't want to get sick, but now I'm dealing with what I'm dealing with. And now I gotta get through that. And then hopefully it completely goes away so I can get back to normal. So I can actually get everything that I want to get done done. Because there's tons of clothes that needs to be washed. Tons of dishes. This room is a hot mess and I'm trying not to show it to you. And my husband has been a very big help. You know, he's cleaned up a lot of things while I'm going through what I'm going through. It's very important to pick a good partner for yourself because if you don't, you're gonna be alone in a lot of things, you know? Sometimes I feel alone with my husband at times and I think that's normal whenever we have like a disagreement or an argument or whatever, or when, you know, tension flares up. But, um, for the most part, my husband has my back. Like, he's been chipping in a lot, even when I'm, like, barely moving. And I just hope I can get my shit together so that, well, God forbid he ever has to deal with anything that will make him sick. But if he does, I hope I'm able to nurse him back to health. So that way, you know, everything's equal. And I just want to do something good for my husband. You know, it feels good to have somebody make up for where you lack, especially when it's needed. And the girls, they've been having cute little moments here and there. Watching them eat is the most adorable thing ever. This is because they have puffy cheeks. Like they're they're still like little little. They're still two and four, so they have these puffy cheeks. And every time they eat, it just looks so adorable. It's just because you know when you get older, so especially like around ten, you start losing that baby fat, and that's when you start to slowly look like an adult. And then it gets to a point where the only time somebody thinks you're cute when you're eating is if they're romantically attracted to you. Because everybody else is just going, eh, what's the big deal? They're just eating, man. <laughs> I mean, unless somebody's obnoxious or like the most disgusting eater ever, then 
then you'll draw attention to yourself, you know? Other than that, you're just normal. <sighs> like I said, I've been feeling kind of off here lately. So I haven't really, well, there's nothing really wrong with my fro at all, really. But I don't know, I feel like I wanted to. I wanted to go change the girl's show. So I forgot what my train of thought is. So I guess we're just going wherever we go now. Man, yeah, it, it's been a lot just dealing with everything around me. Being a housewife is not as easy as you think it is. Especially with the expectations of a housewife. You know? Yeah, in, in certain cases you still have to look a certain way. Your housework has to be damn near near spectacular, you know? It, like almost hotel quality clean. Like that's how, that's how motherfuckers expect you to be in miles away. Like nothing needs to be out of place. Everything needs to be fully furnished and decorated and, and everything needs to look like catalogs and shit, you know? That's the expectation for it. But the reality of being a housewife You're tired a lot, yeah. And mind you, what I'm saying, it don't apply to everybody because there's some people that got it together and they do actually meet expectations. But for for the majority, you know, you now it's maybe a little bit messy because you got to get your shit together. And then you get in the process of getting your shit together and then something happens like, I don't know, getting sick or... Maybe you have to leave for some reason. And then when you leave, whatever housework that needed to be attended to isn't being attended to because you're in some other place, you know? And then, you know, when you're the housewife, you your only companion unless family or friends comes around is your spouse. So when he's at work, you're just here. You just got to deal with everything, you know, by yourself. And then the hours just feel like it's just inching by. Like every time you look at the clock, you're like, okay, 12 o'clock. I got three more hours to wait. The next time you look at the clock, it's just 12.01. So we just playing these games, huh? You know? But yeah, you know, it, it's, like I said, waiting is one of the most energy draining things you can do that doesn't require that much energy. Because you're doing nothing. Unless you decide to participate in activities while you wait, which is probably the best way to wait, by participating in activities, but if you're not and you're just waiting, that shit will drive you crazy. And if you're the type of person that watches Jerry Springer or knows anything about marital drama, there's a lot of people that say, well, you know, you weren't here, so that's why I cheated. That type of shit. I don't agree with that. Like, yeah, I'm here alone. There has never been a time where I was like, you know what? It takes forever for my husband get back, get back to get back home. You just bring another dude in here, you know? I don't know. That'll kill some time. I've never thought of that, and I never really wanted to do that. But some people, you know, some people need extra companionship. But if you need extra companionship, I would advise, if somebody asked me for advice, just ask one of your friends to come over. Ask one of your girlfriends to come over. That'll help you kill time. You don't need to get... You don't need to get dick to, like... Kill some time for your dude to get home. But you know, people do things for different reasons. Doesn't make it right, but it does make it a reason. But yeah, there's a lot of time that goes on in the day. So I do get people's concerns about cheating and stuff like that. Which is why you have to be careful with who you decide to be in a relationship with. 
And I would say be in a relationship with because you don't want to step into marriage with somebody that you don't trust. I mean, there are people in regular relationships that can't deal with not looking at a phone. Because I, I told myself them from the beginning. I'm not looking through my man's phone. I'm not picking up his phone to deliberately look and see if there's another bitch there. If she there, she's going to be there whether I look at the phone or whether I don't. I'm not stressing myself out over a hypothetical woman. I, I'm, I'm just not doing it. And I don't get why people do that. Just enjoy your relationship. If it gets to a point where you know for sure they not down for you no more, then it's time to leave. You know? And I know leaving is like the scariest and the hardest thing for you to do. But that's what you got to do. Either you leave or you accept the fact that you're being cheated on. But that's it. You leave or you accept the fact that you're being cheated on and you continue to live your life like this. You know? Because if you're going to sit up here and try to do the bullshit where I'm going to cheat on him too, why put yourself in a position where you don't have leverage? Like, I, would, I wouldn't do it. If he cheating on me, he cheating on me. I, I don't need penis to get even with a motherfucker. I don't. <laughs> There's no point. I mean, I guess I'm just built different, you know. But no, I don't need penis to get back at my husband. But for, for what reason? Why, why would people want to do that? What does it prove to also cheat? Does it really make you even? Because in my view, you're just losing the leverage over him. You can say, well, you cheated. And he can go back and say, you cheated too. Then who wins the argument? I know. Nobody. <laughs> no! She had to be over here for a little bit. Say hi, Lee. Getting some arm workouts here. She's getting heavier. You gonna say something? Stressing out over who your man could possibly be fucking other than you. Because then you find out the only other option is to just leave. And why would you look to leave somebody before you even really got in good with them? Which is why I don't understand the concept of thinking about divorce when you're trying to get married. Don't think about divorce and prenups, prenups when you're trying to get married because you're just setting up bad karma anyway. Well, 
you gonna lose a lot if you sign a prenup, but I mean, I ain't trying to take anything from a nigga. Like, I, Cause I wouldn't want nobody taking anything from me, you know? How would you feel if you were a woman and you, you know, worked hard for your business, this motherfucker didn't sign the prenup and he get to take half of your shit? I feel some type of way. I'm like, mm. what if I do build something on my own and wind up being successful with it? And now this motherfucker gotta take half my shit cause he was used to a certain lifestyle. Like, but yeah, I, I was sign the prenup cause it's like, I, like I said, I'm not going into marriage trying to take anything from a nigga. So I would have, there would be nothing in my conscience that would make me feel like it's mandatory not to sign it. Cause I'm going in there with love. The marriage that I'm in right now, I went into because, or I am currently in because I love the man that I'm with. I'm not with him because I want a bag or I want status or there's anything selfishly that I want from it. You know, I didn't get married for that. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to argue with somebody that want to do that. Because that's none of my damn business. But personally, if you ask me, no, I wouldn't do that. Because I wouldn't want that shit done to me. And that's just the wrong way to go about things, you know? Just going into something just to take something from somebody. And then once you use up what you've taken, then you have to go back and go take from somebody else. It's not sustainable at all. I mean, I guess the people that are benefiting from that choice would beg to differ, but unless you got a billion in your pocket, it's gonna run out pretty quick. <laughs> so it's like, you, you get into marriage because you want to be with that person. You get into marriage because you want to be with a family. I would dare to say, don't have sex unless you want to have a family. Because babies are possible from that. And, um, you know, if you don't want kids, don't put yourself in a position to have kids. I mean, personally, I'm pro-choice, and I'm pro-choice because you, you just never know what's going to happen. You have to, I wouldn't say use it routinely, especially since you get too many damn abortions, you can fuck up your own damn health. Like, I would not suggest anybody just be getting abortions, like... I wouldn't suggest you do that, like, constantly, because you can fuck yourself up like that. Because the first however many could probably go well, but then it just takes that one to fuck you up completely. Sometimes you just got to leave the body alone. Leave the body alone. Experience life. Sit in a park for a little bit. Meditate. You know? Have your head on a swivel because you know only crazy motherfuckers out there. Y'all know who about to lose their mind. But I just just leave the body alone. I believe abortion should be a very last resort. And I know motherfuckers wanna like try to not make it seem like rape is I mean rape. You know what? I don't already freaking said it. But anyway, um, <laughs> I don't want to make want to say that uh, SA is not really, you know, we shouldn't use that because it's not big in statistics. But I, I think it's a very important thing because think about it. Let's say you're a dude and you have a wife. Your wife does everything she normally does and she still happens to, you know, go outside, hang up some clothes, and in the process of her going outside and hanging up some clothes, let's just say you have a 
job did you work in the daytime? And she decides to motherfucking hang up the clothes in the daytime, as you would, because sunlight is out. And that's the fastest way to, you know, get some clothes dry, because the sun is hot. But let's just say she's doing her normal routine. You know, she out there alone. And she's been scoped. And, you know, when you're doing normal stuff, you, your normal routine, you don't think about who's scoping you. You're not constantly worrying about who's around you because then you'd probably be like me, having a motherfucking panic attack. <laughs> but let's just say she's out there hanging up the clothes or whatever. This dude has been scouting her for, like, some shit of time. And, you know, while you're... At your job, doing what you're supposed to be doing. This guy takes advantage of your wife while she's in the process of doing what she's supposed to be doing. And unfortunately, she winds up pregnant from the SA. What do you do? Do you force your wife to have that kid and put it up for adoption? Do you opt for abortion and just act like this shit has never happened? Which decision are you going to make? Or are you dead ass willing to raise the assaulter's kid because you're that much pro-life? Because there's a lot of dudes out there that get possessive over their women and it's like, if you're that possessive over your woman, why would you force her to go through that? Because that's something that affects you directly too. Because you got to put whatever energy into this. And either you raising the assaulter's kid, you're putting the assaulter's kid up for adoption, ergo forcing your wife to go through with a pregnancy, or you just end it and it, it never happened. You know? I mean, of course, after that point, you would have to keep track of who the hell is looking at your wife and be, you know, ready to attack when it's time. But, you know, what are you doing if that scenario happens? Because I know there's plenty of rape scenarios where, I mean, great. You know, my channel ain't monetized, no way. I don't know. I'm sorry for anybody who get offended by the word that starts with the R. I'm just used to talking a certain way. But, yeah, you... You want to say this, but what if it directly happens to you like that? You really willing to raise another dude's kid or put your wife through the process of giving birth just because you disagree with the whole abortion thing? And I ain't arguing with anybody's decision, to be honest. That's your decision. That's your life. It's not my job to make you do things a certain way, you know? Not my job, and it's not anybody else's job to make you do things a certain way. Unless you're breaking the law, and unless you're messing with somebody else's life. Which, I understand the argument for abortion is the fact that you're messing with somebody else's life. But, you know, somebody that already has... I, I, I know, it's, it's, it's complicated. I guess my point is... You gotta choose which one you want. Because, yeah, you could be like, yeah, I'm pro-life. We just going to carry it the term and then put it up for adoption. But what if she don't want to do that? What if she's like, hey, that nigga assaulted me? Why would you? What if she sees you as a cuck because of it? I mean, I guess you technically be more of a cuck if you were raised the assaulter's kid. I mean, and that shit complicated. And like I said, there's other situations where the woman is like, you know, out doing grocery shopping or whatever. And these things happen or... She out at the club, and I think those are more common ways for that to happen. Oh, yeah, and then you have to think about the whole, some people's family members do that to them. And, uh, you know, the other touchy subjects that's kind of cringy to even look at, you know. <clears throat> but all those things are very important when you think about it, you know. The main thing I don't agree with is just... Getting the abortion just because you feel like it. I, I don't agree with that. I mean, either way, I wouldn't argue with nobody about it. That's their body, their choice, whatever, you know. Ain't none of my business. 
But I don't agree with that. I, I, like I said, I don't think you should go, no, I, I just don't feel like getting pregnant. I mean, I just don't feel like being pregnant. Well, I just don't feel like being pregnant anymore. Let me just go somewhere now. Like, you shouldn't treat that shit that casually. Mm -mm. Because at the end of the day, you want to say your body, your choice. But like I said, the more you act on this particular procedure, the more you can fuck up your body. Because there's such thing as sepsis. And that shit ain't nothing to play with, you know? Don't treat it as a routine thing. If you gotta do it, you gotta do it. But don't treat it as a, ro a routine, you know, thing. I, and I know this, what I'm about to say next is easier said than done, but don't put yourself in a situation where you'd be at a high risk of that. But yeah, it's easier said than done, but the best thing you can do is try not to put yourself in a situation where that would happen to you. So that way you can avoid having to try to have the conversation with yourself or whether you need an abortion or not, but also, you know, so that you're not traumatized, you know? You, you want the full autonomy to do whatever you want with you. And you can't do that if somebody takes advantage of you, you know? And like I said, you shouldn't just be getting pregnant and just, you know, constantly getting it done. Because like I said, you can mess up your body. And there's a lot of women that have to make that decision for whatever reason that are traumatized from it. And they would hope to never do it again, you know? But I'm going to just stop that there. And I'm going to just say I'm happy that I'm able to see y'all again. And hopefully I can make more videos and I can talk about something specific or if not anything specific, at least something more lighthearted. But hey, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.